morning and good night. Thanks again for downloading the Body Snatchers podcast. And when you listen, stream, or download straight to your device, CastBox is your best option. CastBox is a free platform on your computer or mobile device that promotes podcasts just like ours to millions of listeners worldwide. Go to the App Store or Google Play and look for the orange symbol. If you're listening on your computer, go to castbox.fm and look for our show. Remember, if you like what you hear today, don't forget to subscribe and comment. So let's get started with Steve, Tino, Gia, and John with the news. Enjoy the show. I want to line the pieces up. Yours and mine. All right, bros and girls, thanks for letting us in your ears. Thanks for spreading the word that the Body Snatchers podcast is the new hotness in the podcast world. And you know who you are. And you know who you aren't. If you aren't, become an R by telling them to go on their mobile porn machine they call a phone or regular porn machine they call a computer and go directly to bodysnatcherspodcast.com. Run it back. Bodysnatcherspodcast.com. There, all your wildest dreams will come true, John. That's Body Snatchers podcast related, of course. It sounded pretty good, right? Uh, Good is questionable. How long did it take you to come up with that? (laughs) Instant. (laughs) Instant. But yeah, thanks everyone for making some noise. It makes us really happy and it makes my heart rock hard. I'm tearing up my heart, Steven. Don, how do you feel? I'm doing all right, man. How about you guys? Pretty good, man. No strings attached. I'm fucking burning up in here, man. Everyone else turned their AC off when they record? No, I just get naked. I just made... Two references to NSYNC songs and nobody heard it. I'm a Backstreet guy. Fag. I'm watching the life. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that how that works? <laughs> We're in a fight. It's, it may be 2017, but I'm I'm still Team NSYNC. Although I think when I was a kid, I liked Backstreet Boys better. They're all 40. All 40 and terrible. Yeah, they're they're not doing too. They're not doing too good. <laughs> now, uh, now today it's just the boys. Geo Bomb is still adjusting to civilian life, but. I read online that she might be back next week, so we'll see. I re- she she got she to gotta get her a place to live. Yeah. Well, I read it online, so it must be true. Unless she starts recording at like the public library or some shit. Like a poor person, they're homeless just, people. They're just coming over to her, telling her to be quiet. I can't. It's a podcast. I just, I just need a little bit of Wi-Fi. She's just scratching herself, itching, looking like a fiend. We can hear homeless people fucking in the background. Wow. It is California. They're, they are everywhere out there, so that's really not that uh, far-fetched. Well, that's how libraries are used for now, right? Homeless people to bang. Uh, they're still living better than most fucking people that are actually living in homes here in Chicago. You ain't lying. <laughs> Well, John, you got some news? Run it. Yeah, so um, basically I just want to talk about two games that I'm interested in right now. Uh, for what system? At least for, of course, uh, Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> New games with gold. Uh, a game that just came out, I think, yes, was it yesterday, is uh, Battlefield 3. And um, there's any other people that love Battlefield as much as I do and was in it when, like, clans uh, were a big thing where... You just fill up an entire server with uh, people who are all on the same team and everybody's working on mics and whatnot. Um, Our that female was listeners best. are really going to appreciate this Battlefield bullshit you brought to the table today. Oh, I'm sure. Xbox can go gold but not platinum. I wonder why. <laughs> Man, I've met some pretty fucking awesome uh, female Battlefield players, so I'm sure there's a couple out there that actually still care. But uh, one thing I'm not going to let you do is respect women on this podcast. <laughs> the very idea. <laughs> Somebody. Has. Right. Where do you get the audacity? Oh, God. Mr. Steal your girl over here. OK. <laughs> All right. Mr. Xbox. White Knight. <laughs> White Knight 69 on Xbox Live. Everyone had him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I guarantee there's probably somebody on Xbox Live. Does that, when, whenever uh, do you guys do the game chat or you just stay in private parties when you play online. Uh, when we play online, we do game chat. So, but we we had it set up to where um, if you were in a four man squad, only the squad leader would be in like overall game chat, so you could communicate with other squad leaders. So that's how we we actually had like strategies and shit when we play. So certain squads would defend certain objectives. Whenever whenever I get into a confrontation with a female gamer, I go straight to the rape threats. <laughs> you know, whenever I get in a confrontation with a male gamer. 
I go straight for the rape threats. I, I see why you don't have Xbox anymore because they probably banned your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I just like games where you get to teabag your kills. I mean, that's almost every goddamn game now. There's a couple games where they like uh, slowed down teabagging or took it out. I think it's funny. They they disable it when you go I mean, over the body. It's called crouching. So you- well, like uh, what was it in? DC Universe Online, um, when you it was you know a big uh, PVP uh, heroes versus villains type of game, which was f- so fun when it first came out. They really nerfed oh, it. Oh, it's so fun! But when they first had it, you could like literally like you're just in a city. You go over to a hero's uh, area if you're a villain, and like they're all hanging out in front. And no matter what level they are, you could attack everybody. Like you could pick up a bus and just whip it with like you know huge AOE damage in front of the fucking uh, you know heroes. Uh, like embassy or whatever and all the heroes that were outside would get hit with the bus and anybody who was like under level nine automatically died it was just great (laughs) and then you could walk over to them and you could uh the crouch button used to be very responsive you could tap i think it was like r2 or something you could just tap the shit out of it really fast and like you know if you hit it like you know four or five times in like a fucking second that's how fast you fucking would do the teabag movement and it was really funny the way they crouch it looked just like teabagging and they fucking uh reduced it to where like it it's not as responsive. So if you hit R2, like he'll do the crouch slowly and then just sit there. Like you can't have fun with it. Like the way you used to. Mm-hmm. So that's what I meant to be. Clear. I got a buddy that if, when he gets, uh, when someone sits on his face, he fucking sees red. He gets so pissed. He sends him messages. He fucking haunts him. Does he play call of duty? No, this happens in destiny oh. because in destiny, uh, you can see like, you got like a aerial droid camera view of these people going over your body and, putting their nuts in your face yeah i mean that that whole thing got really bad in uh call of duty and a a lot of people would rage from it um but you know still happens in other games call of duty is a fucking rage factor anyways i fucking hate it it's annoying i hate it so much i just want them to remake call of duty 2 and call it a day yeah um yeah they're they're saying that they might end up uh doing a remaster for modern warfare 2 so we'll see. They have three fucking studios working on titles, so we will be getting a Call of Duty title every single fucking year. That is that's terrible. Stupid as fuck. It, it really well, it's it. been it's balanced between uh, who was it, Treyarch, and uh, what was the other company? Infinity Ward, and apparently there's another yeah, one. Infinity Ward and and then Treyarch were uh, handing them off every other year back to back, and I'm over that shit. It's stupid. There's no reason you should be releasing that a title. Every single year, that is beyond two. John, well, John hates. That's not entirely true. John hates annual titles. Like they got a statue next to Robert E. Lee. He fucking despises them. I, I do, Dude. man. Wow. Because even like, if Square Enix did that shit, though, I'd be all over. I know. I'm saying. I was, I was just thinking that. What comp? What a uh, video game company would I fucking just with open arms accept something every year? You would be over it so fast because the same thing with Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed had great story, great gameplay, but they fucking they are got you it. fucking crazy? No, yeah, see, but Square Enix isn't limited though. Like that's why I fuck with them is because you can drop a Final Fantasy game and it will be so different with just keeping like a couple of things that like make it what you're familiar with. You know, like the chocobos or like you know the summons or something. I mean, but if they're doing it every single year, do you really think they're going to have that much time to put that much production value into it? Oh, they don't. And they don't want to outsource and mix up studios. That's why we don't get it. But I'm just saying, since we're talking about it, like if it, if they had two studios that were capable of producing a game within two years to where they alternated year to year, so each year you got a game, I wouldn't be upset. I'm, I'm just saying. Um... You know, but that's never going to happen because obviously for those games to be as good as they are, it obviously takes fucking take some time. That's why I never get mad when a good game's pushed back. It's like, go ahead, take your time. I'll be here. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Destiny. <laughs> How about Kingdom Hearts 3 getting pushed back fucking almost a decade? I don't even want to fucking play that game anymore. <laughs> like I bought the fucking uh, Kingdom Hearts. Uh, what was it? The 2.7 or whatever the fuck it was. I don't even remember anymore. I bought that shit. Didn't like it. And I, I guess I only bought it because I really wanted it to be three and it's not. And like now I don't even want to play three. And like even like the writers have admitted like, yeah, the story's pretty much fucked because we did way too much. And now we're like trying desperately to tie it into where the story makes sense. Uh, I'm waiting. And it's I'm waiting not gonna work. for the release date to get closer. Then I'm going to start from one. I'm going to go on proud mode all the way through because that story, man, it gives it gives me a lot of feels. I don't know why, but that whole thing. The first two, yeah, but after that, it gets messy. It gets really, really messy. Even we did a show, 
fuck, like almost towards the beginning of the year we were discussing it and Virgie was trying to walk us through because she's played every single one. Yeah. And even she couldn't do it. Like she didn't admit it, but she couldn't it's do it. Massive. Like she was trying. It's massive. And it, well, it's not that it's massive. It's just, it's, there's tons of games that have, you know, lots of storyline. Like, look, look at Halo. Halo has a lot of storyline that actually makes sense. But Kingdom Hearts is all over the fucking place. Yeah, there, like, there's a lot of twists and turns. And and I think it's because of Disney. I think they intended to only do two games and then milk the franchise. But they there was so much popularity, they're bringing it back. And in doing that, now they're just like, oh, fuck, why did we do what we did? Uh, You know, they might as well say that, like, half of that shit is, like, not canon anymore. <laughs> and like just just start fresh like from where two was i wouldn't be mad i don't think a lot of people would uh yeah a lot of people would but that's like people those are those same weird people that like are trying to make sense out of something that like is clearly a messy story i'm not saying it's not a good game because it is i mean like even with the story being as construed and as confusing as it is i would still buy it um but we're still gonna buy it as fuck oh yeah but i mean i'm but still i mean it's gonna be really messy it's gonna be tough getting into um, and I'm going to have to go back and like watch a ton of things just to like make sense of it. Yeah. That, that's why I'm going to, I'm going to get the games and I'm going to ramp up to it. So it's fresh. I'm sure there's a lot of shit I forgot and I'm not, I'm really not looking forward to it, but I know it's something I got to do. I just want to get back on the gummy ship and get with my guys <laughs> with Donald and goofy and make some shit happen. John, you were saying, fuck. Yeah, I know, right? We were, man, we went on a fierce tangent. Um, I know you were discussing battlefield, so I don't know if you wanted to wrap that up or have more insight still on that. Um, Shit, I almost forgot what I said. Um, no, but I mean, it was just Battlefield Three was was one of the better uh, like massive multiplayer game um, for Xbox or any gaming system at that at that point. Uh, especially with clan battles, they got really big, and all the maps were pretty awesome. And it kind of sucks because when Battlefield Three was kind of coming near to an end uh, with Battlefield Four coming out. Um, there was a huge console. There was a huge con- console switch for players, so not everybody was upgrading to like the Xbox One. So um, the clan battle thing kind of fell apart. And then when B, uh, BF4 came out, a lot of the uh, options that you had to even make clan battles possible weren't available. So you couldn't rent your own servers. You couldn't set up your own rules. They didn't have any way to like set up clans and shit in the game, like they did in BF3. So it kind of sucks that it all fell apart because I ended up making some pretty decent friends on Xbox Live. For a console gamer, yeah. Is it on Steam? Uh, I'm sh- yeah. For uh, yeah, uh, then, yeah, yeah. Play that shit on Steam. It's um, probably a million times better on Steam. Steam fixes everything that consoles just can't get right. I mean, it wasn't. It was. It was more the developers. It wasn't the game itself. They just didn't put shit in that should have been there from day one. But. Some asshole on Steam has a bunch of custom shit that he's not supposed to have that everybody can get involved with, though. Well, That's why I fuck with Steam. Yeah, I mean, if I had a computer to fucking play video games on, I probably would be on Steam more often than not. I probably would have been... Sell that Xbox, bro. Get, the, get it the fuck out of... You know what I just discovered while you were talking, John? What? I don't give a fuck about realistic shooters. And the reason I don't is it's probably the same reason that uh, the Joker in uh, The Dark Knight... The reason why he kills with knives is too personal. It's too quick. Or yeah, with guns, they're too, they're too impersonal. They're too quick. You know, I like a battle with guns. That's what I like. I like the destiny. I like the halo. I like the shields, I like the bombs, or I like the powers, whatever it is. If you're just some dude with a gun and a fast gun or an exploding gun, I don't think I like that. That's because you're a new. I mean, there's uh, different. There's, uh, I like all of them. I mean, shooters for me are, there's fun and, but I, but I was thinking that uh, maybe Tino doesn't like first person shooters because of the same thing, you know, getting shot in the back. No one's going to like that if you get shot in the back six times. Well, I mean, if you want to know about me, I always uh, used to enjoy FPS games when I was younger. And when I got into more serious FPS games like Counter-Strike and I liked Counter-Strike, bec- well, at first it was very frustrating, but Counter-Strike made you better at games because when you die, you don't get to just respawn in fucking 10 seconds or whatever. When you die, you have to wait for the entire team to go down and those matches could be really fast. You know, it could be three or five minutes or those matches could go on for fucking, you know, until the time limit runs out, which I think used to be like up to 10, 20, 30 minutes, depending on the match. It, it got really serious. Um, and the realistic shit makes it makes you a lot better because it's like real life, man. It's like, you know, you're not going to be able to just heal up real quick or get a redo or yeah. you know, search for vengeance. I don't want real life. That's why I'm playing fucking video games. Well, 
I mean, and that's fine. Go play Overwatch and be fucking queer like everybody else. But I mean, if you want like a man's game, Battlefield might be for you. Like, wow. I mean, I'll give John shit for playing it just because I don't care for FPS games that much because I think that they're really repetitive these days. But that shit is on point. I, I, did, I did like a Battlefield 4. It's just, you know, in Battlefield 4, two shots in the back with any gun, you're dead. Uh, you can get killed with a grenade you don't even see. That's only if you're really playing hardcore. That's that's where like uh, shot placement counts more than. It was quick multiplayer. So what if I get shot in the head once, I'm dead, but shot twice anywhere else, I'm dead. But he has a fucking automatic rifle. Miss me with that shit. God, you're so weak. That's like the newbiest complaint I've ever heard you say. Yeah. But that Counter Strike mode you said, uh, Destiny Two has a mode called Survival to where your whole team has to die before someone wins. So and there's no respawn. Basically, Rainbow Six Siege right there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool. Uh, I still like the crest. Uh, what is it? Supremacy to where someone drops a crest and you can recover it or take it for your team. What was the uh, the other game you had, John? Uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Um, I know I talked. I kind of hyped it up a little bit. Uh, I think in one of our earlier shows, but um, I mean, the game was good. There was a decent story to it, a bunch of missions for you to do, and um, you kind of had to build your character from uh, from nothing. But uh, they have a new DLC coming out for PvP mode, which they didn't have any of that beforehand. So now they'll have a um, a four on four match with pretty much in the the open world of um, their version of Bolivia, which is pretty cool because. Um, you have to employ a lot of the tactics that didn't really work with the AI players where you actually have to use cover. You can um, uh, customize your character's outfits to like blend into certain environments. Um, and you actually have to work with your teammates to be able to uh, obviously take down the, the enemy team. But um, I, there's not a, a ton of information on it. Like we know there is... Um, we know it's usually a lot of the rounds are going to be only 10 minutes long. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have like certain rounds where you can respawn and certain rounds where you can't. Um, there won't be any vehicles available during the gameplay, which good. That's cheating. I kind of hit or miss for me, but it is what it is. That sounds whack. Make that shit entertaining. I mean, the vehicles aren't like really useful in, in the game though. It's not like you're driving tanks and shit like in battlefield. They're, they're just, uh, basically used to get from point A to point B. So It sounds like every other FPS game to me, though. I mean, it kind of does, but the gameplay itself is... is it's going to be different. Like, it, if you're not into SP or FPS games like that, they're all going to kind of sound the same at the end of the day, and I get that. But if you're into them and you play a lot of different ones, like the difference between Battlefield and Siege or the difference between... Destiny and um, like Call of Duty. Well, I don't know. Destiny and Call of Duty kind of share a lot. But even like with Titanfall came out, like there's there's differences in the gameplay that you appreciate. I like Titanfall. Titanfall. Yeah, Titanfall fun. was. All I heard was, "Me get gun, gun make you man." <laughs> you got a mass, you got a massive robot. Dude, I moved on to better things, man. I have ascended. Anyway, there's no uh, there's no official release date on the uh, on that Ghost War. It, the DLC is going to be called Ghost War. There's no official uh, release date on it yet, but they are doing a open beta for it, which I still find weird for a game that's already out. It's like just release the fucking DLC and call it a day. But I guess if they want to try to work out bugs or whatever before the official release date with all the maps, then, you know, fine, whatever. Whatever's going to make the play, the gameplay smooth once the DLC is released is fine with me. Um, but they are doing an open beta for it September 21st to the 25th, so... Ah, that's no good for me. That's no good for me. Yeah, I don't... There's a Gilmore Girls marathon that weekend. Fuck, I don't get the... Just binge watch it like you do everything else. I want to watch it that weekend. Okay, all right. All right, well, do whatever makes you happy, bro. Um, I will but, fucking do whatever I want to do. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, um, they're doing the the open beta for it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to end up releasing in October. It's probably not going to be that far behind uh, between from the uh, the open beta. So um, I'm looking forward to it because I have been wanting to get back into that game um, since it kind of since it kind of died for me after I beat the uh, the main story and all the other DLC that came with it, it'll be kind of nice to 
actually play against some other players. Um, what I would like uh, is that if they had AI in the PvP mode, so you still kind of had other elements um, in the gameplay, so you're not just only focusing on the other players. Like You still have to watch out for other factions within the game. So, But we'll see. I mean, other than that, that was pretty much it. Some things I'm kind of excited about. Um, so if there's any other Xbox players out there listening as much as as much hate as we get on this podcast, feel free to hit me up. Yeah, if there's any other Xbox players out there, please kill yourself. Great fix for news. And if you want to talk shit about it or further discuss why it's Donald Trump's fault, head to Facebook.com slash Body Snatchers Podcast, Twitter at Body Snatchers PC, Instagram Body Snatchers Podcast. Now we have someone in this group who was lucky enough I don't even think John signed up if we're being honest to get the Dragon Ball Z beta. Well, uh, definitely not. First off, I didn't get lucky. It was a drawing and they were measuring dicks and I was the long one. <laughs> <laughs> That's an it reference. Had That's from that. last week. Last week's show had to bring that back. All right. So, uh, so first of all, I'm, I'm going to start with a question. It has a title Z in it. So does, is there any indication of the super series or any movies that came with uh, Dragon Ball Z? And if there isn't, could you see a DLC sliding in there pretty easily? Because it looks like it. it's not sliding in there sexually. You know, what? It, honestly, it's not easy to answer that question, and that's because the beta was so limited. Um, it's was it a to, trial? Well, it, like, it's a, like it's a beta. Time. Like, okay, so remember in Xenoverse, like they had that main area, like Toki Toki, in the first one. Uh huh. So you're in an area kind of like that, where they like make your. Uh, they give you like a little avatar that's like a Goku, Piccolo, or you know Krillin, and one of the Z Fighter characters that you get to walk around as um, and kind of customize a little bit. And they kind of look like kind of like Wii characters, you know, like kind of yeah. like yeah. silly fun. Um, and you just walk around in this you know city, and in the center they have like an arena where you can you know sign up, and that's where you wait to battle. Um, and then they have other areas around where there's just a big red X because it's closed off for the beta, so you're not able to access any of what these things might be. So we don't know if they're going to be like you know accessories, power boosts, special missions. Um, I mean, if they do that stuff, then of course you know there's going to be a DLC. Um, I would imagine. But as far as what they give you in the actual beta, like you literally, you know, get to see what I just described and sign up to battle and then you battle people randomly online. That's it. They gave you nothing else. Oh, nice. How was that online? Smooth? Uh, it's it plays weird. Like, I can't even really think like what it plays like. I, I was really concerned that it was going to play like Street Fighter because I'm trash at Street Fighter. I am. I mean, I, I like the, you know, the story and I used to get those games just to, you know, play them and beat them and say I did. But at the end of the day, I was not like, you know, a competitive Street Fighter player. So I was like, damn, I'm going to get this game and get my fucking shit tossed. But um, no, it's it's not too bad. It's like uh, unlike Dissidia, which was the most recent beta that I was uh, in with a fighting game like this. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of combos, you know, so you've got, you know, you're, uh, everybody's got, uh, you know, like a high punch, um, low punch, low kick, that sort of thing, like a special move. Um, Some, someone said to describe it, it's like Street Fighter, but all the characters are extremely heavy. See, but that's not like Street Fighter, though, because the thing about Street Fighter is you have, like, really fast characters, you've got charge characters, charge characters do, you know, a lot of damage, they're just trickier to play, um, and I could never play them, but I have friends who dominated as charge characters. This game, from... What I could tell, we played everybody. There's not a single charge character in there. There's nothing along those lines. Um, they do have uh, kind of like in Dragon Ball GT, like the media, uh, media, meteor burst. So where like if you do certain moves at the same time, like the characters will like lock in and just kind of do that Dragon Ball Z shit where like they're punching really, really right. Fast. They fight really fast, yeah. Yeah, and basically like there's like a breakaway and it backs up, and then as soon as they back up, then you can you know jump in and can you do anything something. while you're doing that? Like what do you do? Smash buttons or spin from, the stick around? From what I could tell, there's nothing you can do. Like it's just a really quick like you know second exchange and then yeah and then it backs up um so it's like that's whatever um you can teleport which was like i think uh square and triangle um no square and o would be like your teleportation so you could appear behind them give them a, a swift kick it would take away some of your key in order to do that so you can't spam it um with using uh, Square and X, they give you the ability to charge like in some of the other games you can charge your key uh they didn't really give you uh much information as far as like the move list and stuff like everything was super limited so like you know i'm I'm playing these rounds and like i'm trying to win but i'm also trying to figure <laughs> shit out like a fucking child 
Yeah, it was it was kind of frustrating at first, but like once you know I got through a couple of rounds, at least with like all the basic moves and uh, minor specials, I was starting to get a basic understanding, and and it does kind of flow. It's just the characters like are all similar, but they don't necessarily play the same. You know, like there's a handful of characters where you know if you do a certain button configuration, either you're you're going to shoot some kind of a beam. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there's characters like Piccolo where if you do that move, instead of him shooting a beam, he'll stretch his arm across the stage and like grab you and pull you close, um, which is different. Or like uh, Krillin would like toss something on the ground, like a key blast, and then like it would be delayed and then explode a couple seconds later. Yeah, so, so that's like a common power. Uh, well, it is, but your fighting style, has, you know, you've got to know your character so that you know how to time it. Um, you know, what combos you're going to, you know, you're going to bleed into, you know, for a blaster, it was kind of straightforward. So I enjoyed that. Uh, the Piccolo one, I kind of had a little routine for, I had a harder time, uh, with Krillin. Krillin was kind of weird. Um, but I could see where like you could dominate with him if you took the time to, you know, master him. But overall, I mean, just because it's something new and it's exciting and it's fucking beautiful. Like it's, it's a really, it's, it's cartoony, but it's got that unreal four engine in there. So, you know, the, the scenes were like, it's a cartoon, you look at them and all of a sudden it goes from this, you know. 2d atmosphere to like a hardcore 3d atmosphere and then turns back during a move. And the whole time, like it looks like, uh, you know, like you're in the show. Like it's just, it's, it's really hard to not get into it. So at this point, like I'm probably, it's probably gonna be one of very few games I buy this fall. Two questions: Are there any, uh, are there any like over the top finishers like a final flash or a spirit bomb? And uh, you already told me a little bit about the moves. Could you see any of them being spam moves or underhanded methods to like mock a tournament or something? It honestly feels really well balanced at this point. Um, I played against a lot of people online. Um, some of them did push my shit in. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm learning, but um, nothing felt like like. I, like Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit, for instance, like that one of the worst, actually the worst Dragon Ball Z game I've ever played on PS3. I plugged that game in, I got in the online mode, and I got fucking raped by people spamming uh, Final Flash over and over again. In fact, I took the game back. I was so fucking mad. Only Dragon Ball Z <laughs> game I've ever returned. I was so fucking pissed. And I've owned every game from like uh, Dragon Ball GT, Final Bow, Ultimate Battle 22 on the original PlayStation in 97, going all the way up until present day. So it's like, just to let you know, like I'm pretty serious about my Dragon Ball Z games. So, is, uh, so is this, uh, could this be one on one, two on two, three on three? And can, can, uh, one match hold six, uh, real players? I'm not sure how they're going to do it because they are advertising three V three. Um, the matches essentially are one person against another person, um, you know, so one v one, but it's technically three v three because when you pick your character, you you pick three characters that you go in with. So mid battle, like you can press a button and like you know pop a character out, and another character will like jump in for him. Or like if somebody kills you, um, you know, then that character is done; he's written off, and then one of your you know other characters automatically comes out until all three have been defeated. So is it like um what is it Marvel and Capcom to where you can combine attacks? Actually, yes. I didn't even know that. I, I accidentally did it during a match yesterday, and I was like fucking ecstatic when I did it. I had Goku and fucking went to punch somebody, and I uh, was trying to switch out characters, but I must have hit something wrong because instead of switching out, Trunks came in. Uh, he was one of my other characters as an assist and fucking sliced the shit out of somebody and like gave him a small blast and then jumped off screen. I was like, oh my god, this shit is so dope. Oh, so it doesn't tag him in. That's pretty cool. Well, you can tag him in, but that's what I was trying to do. I had done that, but I guess I must have uh-huh. hit something wrong because he fucking jumped in and fucking, you know. Well, I would like I would like to use him. I would like to use him for a combination move and then put him right back out. Right, and that's that's what that was for. So, like I said, I mean, it's the beta was short because it wasn't like an all day closed beta. Like you had to get on like uh, at certain times for like when the servers were up, and then I I was able to catch the last one in the evening. I think it was on uh, Pacific time, and we're here on uh, Central time in Chicago. And, uh, I got in, I got a good like hour and a half of like, you know, gameplay, but then the server started acting crazy as fuck and I, I couldn't get on anymore. It kept kicking me. So I just said, fuck it. Nice. Nice. John, what do you think? I mean, it's, it's not something I'm probably going to be super interested in, but as far as, um, fighting games, because it's for men, <laughs> but there's, there's something when two people are really, really good at a fighting game it gets it gets fucking intense like me and uh, me and my buddy dustin uh we play towerfall for probably easily it could be over 500 hours if we clocked it from the beginning and we're like jedis in there i mean we can just by the other player moving a little bit we can tell what they're gonna do 
you know, their follow through and it turns into an amazing match. I feel like this is one of those games where it can be that way. Mm. It'll be something new for sure. Like, I hope that it does build into something bigger. But I will say this, though, like the the Budokai franchise from uh, Bandai is probably the best, like, you know, little franchise that they've done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it was just really, really good. You know, Budokai 1, like, like you know, we all lost our shit on PS2. Um, and then when they came out with Budokai 2, we realized how shitty Budokai 1 was because, you know, we got the 3D images and stuff, but, like, they didn't really look that much like the Dragon Ball Z characters. It looked like Tekken from, like, 97, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so now they look cartoony. And then in 3, they fucking made it to the point to where they added in, like, the teleportations or, like, if you hit X, like, with the right amount of stamina fast enough, like, you can completely dodge, like, punches and... Uh, you know, just like really fast that like warp shit they do. Um, and it was just hype, man. Like I couldn't tell you how many hours I had invested in that game with like all my best friends. It didn't have online play, just fucking hours and hours we lost of our lives, like with one of the greatest games ever. And Tenkaichi was a good series. It was not my favorite. I know some people who feel otherwise, but to me, Tenkaichi was just like the shitty beginnings of what it took to get Xenoverse. Cause I had no issues. I personally thought Xenoverse one was a little bit better, but I think that's just me, uh, you know, being prissy about it because Xenoverse 2 added a lot more uh, complex, you know, things that you needed to observe and watch, monitor, you know, whatever have you in order to do the shit that you could Original do. content, it, right? It, well, I, it wasn't even really original. Like, it felt exactly like Xenoverse 1, except they were like, okay, guys, so now we've got, like, all these, uh, you know, parameters that you need to monitor, um, you know, in order to, you know do a certain type of combo or in order to uh disappear and reappear behind somebody you know like there's all these like rules and stipulations that you need to monitor and they took out like a lot of like the auto key building stuff that would allow you to just keep fighting endlessly um and they did that so people would stop spamming moves basically so that was a good thing but i mean it just it brought the game's intensity level up like (laughs) you know like i couldn't sit comfortably and like you know play anymore because universe one was like really really hard but once you unlocked all the shit you needed to and you got a good feel for the game and your moves like it was kind of a breeze so universe two you don't get that like every time you sit down it's like all right i I gotta pay attention 10 and 2 let's get this done (laughs) like i don't know so all in all is it okay for people to hype this game up that haven't played it absolutely um i think it's uh Again, like I was saying, like a breath of fresh air. I just think it's something that's, it's, I mean, it's Dragon Ball Z, but it's it's in a way that we've never really seen it, um, you know, because I, I can't compare it to any Dragon Ball Z game outside of uh, maybe some of the fighting games they had on the original Nintendo, but this is this is different. This is like a whole other animal. Um, it's not. I think it's going to catch on. It's going to be a, a good year for them. Nice. Maybe, uh, maybe John will get a PS4, get it, and all three of us can play just like best friends, but that's up to John, so... <laughs> we'll see. Keep holding your breath. <laughs> All right. Um, our what is it? Batman and Harley Quinn animated movie from the DC universe. It's available now. If you guys want to check it out, rent it or buy it or steal it. Yeah. You mean like on websites like Kiss Cartoon? Oh, <laughs> I didn't say it. I didn't say it. But someone did like that, and not not go there. Because that's where you'll find it, where you could watch it for free. That's what somebody could do. Which is very, very bad. Yeah, so uh so well, Tino why? told us <laughs> Tino Tino told us to watch it and uh I liked it. It wasn't the best. You know, I'm not gonna go back and jerk my dick off to it, but it was uh it was fun. That's how I'll describe it. What fun little you? movie. What about you, John? How did you uh feel if you had to summarize like just how you felt towards it? I mean, I enjoyed it. It was worth the watch. I wasn't, I wouldn't knock it, really. I mean, I'm not saying it has a, had a super in-depth story or anything that was groundbreaking, but for, you know, cartoon, it's... Oh, you mean that, you mean that ending didn't uh, fill you with joy and love? I mean, it's not The Sopranos, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually a good way to describe it. I... Jesus. I I have a lot of opinions about this movie. Um, Going into it, my expectations were high, and they were really high for a couple of reasons, because one, DC um, arguably has never really made a bad DC animated movie. They've pretty much always been amazing. Not just good, amazing. Agreed. Um, 
And we didn't quite get that with this, in my opinion. And it's even more shocking that we didn't get it because they brought back in um, Bruce Timm, who was the original writer for the the Batman animated series in the 90s. If you guys watched that, it had like uh, four or five seasons, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. You guys remember that one? It had, it had the music too, I think. Well, yeah, because they they my brain him, clicked. They yeah. brought him in, and they had a uh, uh, Kevin Conroy, I think, who was the uh, the original uh, voice actor who did Batman in the nineties. You know, so like there was a lot of nostalgia, and he did a great job. Like that was perfect. I loved that in the movie. Um, it just made it more relatable. It made me want to pay attention. You know, uh, and then they had. Uh, this dude Sam Liu who did the art for it and I I really like the art I think it was really well drawn um if you guys aren't familiar with Sam Liu he's done like uh he did the Godzilla animated series like remember Godzilla 2000 the movie and then they did the animated series like on uh Fox Kids Saturday morning nah the only Godzilla series I recognize is the one with Godzuki don't you fucking forget it dude fuck Godzuki I could just hit you so hard for bringing that shit up I watched every one religiously, but I can hit you. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he did that. He did. Um, he's done a whole bunch of the uh, the Marvel animated movies. He's done um, ev- almost every DC animated movie, if not every single one, in the last like ten years. So just to like put things in perspective. So I guarantee, if you like any of those movies, you've seen his art, you've liked it, and I think that this was a uh, this also delivered. But I mean, that's just on the surface, you know, they were set up for success. I don't know if it was, um, the, you know, the studio interfering. I, I don't know what happened or how they dropped the ball, but if I had to speculate, I think the reason that they dropped the ball was because let's, let's be real here. Like I love Batman, but I hate Batman fanboys. And if there's anything I hate more than a Batman fanboy, it's this Harley Quinn, uh, worship that we see, um, in 2017 it's just it's fucking nuts like she's a popular character she's always been a cool character i don't know how the hell out of nowhere people were like you know what let's fucking make her ass more relevant than you know being joker's little hussy um so that was kind of weird being somebody who knew of her existence for the last 20 years then out of the blue she was super popular and then fucking uh will smith and friends came out and you know they they changed her look which i did like her look you know for Dude, the everyone part. everyone was that bitch for halloween but, but yeah, it's like, you know, enough is enough. And they brought that bullshit to the animated world, which was annoying because it was very obvious that they were catering to these like fake Harley Quinn fans. You know what I mean? Like people who weren't really Harley Quinn fans. They're just like this new age, like kind of like people with superhero movies in general who are like, oh, yeah, I love uh, the Avengers. I've seen all their movies. Like what? That's not a what (laughs) you know like it's that kind of situation so for being a fan if you actually like the animated movies in the past and you you know are familiar with harley quinn and and batman it's gonna let you down um because like outside of them like let's pretend they're not catering even though they obviously were like if we just pretend that they weren't for a minute um, it's really hard to figure out like who their audience was because they do things that are very uh, gimmicky, playful that like a child would like or a very simple minded fan of, you know, like Harley Quinn. It was very um, simple. Batman was very passive, too. Right. It wasn't it wasn't really about him and it wasn't supposed to be. It was all about her. And, but like, I feel like they just took it too far. Like um, and I'm going to skip around a little bit with different sections of the movie. So bear with me. But like um in the beginning, like you knew it was going to be shitty because they had this like weird intro music where things got kind of strange fast. They have a scene in the movie where they're in this bar for villains and uh, everybody's singing, <laughs> and, it, and it's just it's really awkward and uncomfortable. It just doesn't feel like it fits, you know. If they if they had a you know say like a ten second thing where Harley came up and like just sang into the mic and it was fine, it'd be cool. But this bitch sang for like five minutes and like I just remember standing at the screen. I was like, why is this still going on? Like. Like, who is this for? Like, I don't understand. Like, it, it made me want to turn the movie off, but I sat through it. Um, so, I mean, that's that. And then at, immediately afterwards, she ate something when she was there and then fucking got the bubble guts. So, you know, she, so now she's in the Batmobile with Robin. Or, well, not Robin. Uh, Nightwing and Batman. And she's in the back and she's like, you know, uh, I got to use the bathroom, guys. You know, which could have been a funny joke. But then they made it really weird where they had like a fucking two minute scene where she starts uh, going, if you're not going to let me use the bathroom, then I'm just going to fucking rip ass and just starts farting like. Dude, it's <sighs> it's, it, it was really. And then Batman, Batman's like smells like discipline. It's fucking weird. 
it was weird, dude. And then, and then Batman, like after a little bit later, is just like, okay, I can't deal with this no more. I'm gonna let her ass out of, and they stop at like a gas station or something. But that's that's fucking weird. Yeah. I'm glad I went on uh, rule 34 before that fucking scene. I'll tell you that much. God, but I I will say this though the 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 suggestive content in that movie made it entertaining. Like I was fucking with it. Like when there's the scene where Harley and Nightwing um, are fighting in an alley. Uh, Harley is no longer um, a villain at this point. Like she's trying to retire and she's a waitress at like some shitty area where uh, they're supposed to dress up as super villains um, at this comic book shop or I'm sorry, uh, this bar uh, dress up like super villains, comic book characters and shit. And so nobody knows she's the real Harley Quinn. Um, So Dick Grayson finds her, uh, can, uh, what is he conf- confronts her about some shit that's going on in the movie. I, I don't want to ruin it for everybody, but he confronts her about some stuff. Um, they end up fighting physically. She, uh, you know, ends up hitting him with some Joker gas. He falls down. He wakes up tied to her fucking bed. And, uh, in like this abandoned building that she like lives in now. Um, and basically she rapes him. <laughs> like, there's no other way to describe it and it's kind of fucked up but at the same time like i actually really liked it like i was getting into it like i was like okay all right some adult content yeah i liked it it was pretty cool i wouldn't call it rape it was definitely consensual i mean he knew batman was gonna be pissed and then he's like oh don't act like you never did it before you never kissed a villain I mean, if we're just guys talking, like, it's not rape, but I mean, if we're talking about, like, people who are really cookie, cu- cookie cutter who watch this shit, and I'm sure you guys know them, and you're in enough nerd groups where you've seen people going, like, Nightwing would never do that, he does what's right, you know, there's a lot of those guys out there, um, and they're gonna look at this as, as a Nightwing definitely got raped, like, that's he how did what He did what was right, the right way to get his dick sucked, got her. Oh, yeah, he definitely did, I mean, I'm not mad at him. Any guy that gets raped deserves to. What? I don't know, dude. I mean, he got knocked out, drugged, dragged into a place, tied up, and then she was like, I'm giving it to you whether you want it or not. And at that point, he's kind of like, well, I'm not saying I don't want it, but it's definitely wrong, ma'am. And she said, take these cheeks. So, I mean... Those curves are real. Ah, shit. She's a cartoon and I'd smash. I don't care. (laughs) Looking just like the cartoon. I'm not sure how that would work. I don't really need to think into it that deep. For all you know, a cartoon (laughs) woman might be better than a real woman. There we go. Yeah, that's a possibility. One that I'm very <laughs> open to. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so that's what that is. Um, another character in the movie that is probably not very well known is uh, Floronic Man. I don't know if you guys are familiar. That was the douchebag that was with um, Poison Ivy. Yeah, so he's uh, he's basically like a B-list level like Swamp Thing. He's been out since like 1962. Um, I've seen him before in comics. Um, I don't read DC as closely as I do Marvel, but I honestly don't really know a lot about him. Like I know what his original design looked like. He wasn't as buff and as swole as this dude was in the movie, um, unless they've done like some new adaptation or something changed after New 52 with him specifically that I don't remember reading. But uh yeah, he was, he was never that swole from what I remember, at least with his initial character design. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much, you know, what that was. Before I forget, two things. One, I definitely want to do a Batman Beyond episode, the series and the movie. Uh, Terry McGinnis? Oh, yeah. Fuck, that show was good. Two, um, you say you don't want to spoil it. I think we should talk about that ending. I mean, it's just, just let them know, like, it's it's really bad. Like, I mean... I mean <laughs> It's it's like what? It's like they were trying to give. Th- That's what I want to hear. What were they trying to do? It was like Scooby Doo, the kinda. Looney Tunes uh, closing thing. God, I just John, you can describe it because I don't even want to talk about that shit. I I addressed what needed to be addressed. It just, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, I, it's kind of hard to just kind of describe it. It just wasn't. It's kind of dumb and unneeded. Yeah, it's like Harley turns into fucking Woody Woodpecker for a little bit, and like Batman is like grinning. Yeah, it was like it was like a Looney Tunes skit, like da 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 da, and then it fucking bubbles down, and then everything's silly, everything's good. God damn! And got them. Fucking pig, where he's like, did it, did it. Porky Pig. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember Porky? What the fuck is wrong with you, John? Oh, uh, his people don't eat pork. <gasps> you probably forgot. The one you're always pissed off. Bacon's delicious. Just kidding. John looks like he eats hog's feet. <laughs> no. Turned around and got him. Well, uh, 
well, yeah, it's it's worth everyone's time. If you like the other movies, you'll <laughs> you won't hate this movie, but you're not gonna watch it again. Yeah, you're I, not gonna go. I didn't hate it, but I wouldn't watch it again. Um, which is rare because I own every other one. This one I rented because I was skeptical, just because it said Harley, and my instincts uh, they were right. So, yeah. Uh, before we get off, uh, there was something I seen on uh, Facebook.com slash Body Snatchers podcast. Cheap plug. Uh, the Hulk was a Wolverine. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Hulk Wolverine. Yeah, can you explain that? Explain I, that to I, us. <laughs> I've never fucking read that. I remember all I remember is that it was suggested, and a lot of people like were against it because they thought it would be stupid. Um, and I know the design looks stupid. Uh, I'm not even sure if they went forward with it. Like Virgie may know it's something that I wouldn't mind looking into. I mean, it's, cause there's a lot of comics out there and for something like that, um, I had, I never looked into it cause it just looked so ridiculously dumb. Like I didn't even bother reading like threads about it to find out if it was an actual comic. Um, but I mean, I, again, I could look into it cause it just, it, it looked awful. Yeah. It, everyone's very upset. Let's tease it for next show. So let's remember to talk about it. Oh God. Okay. Sure. <laughs> All right. So everyone, thanks for listening. Remember to go to bodysnatcherspodcast.com. Again, everyone that's spreading the word, uh, we appreciate it and it shows. We're going to keep on doing this as long as you keep on talking. So keep doing what you're doing and we'll take care of it on our end. So for John, Tino, Ghost of Gia, and Steve, tell someone you love them. Later. Jeez. Like Patrick Swayze Ghost? <laughs> Exactly like Patrick Swayze ghost. Yes, that's the best kind of ghost. The sexiest kind of ghost. No homo. Well, a little bit of homo.